In this video, I am going to discuss uh, various ways that we store and think about social information. Some of these terms will overlap with terms that you might have been exposed to if you've taken a class on cognitive development or cognitive psychology, but here they're going to be applied to how we think about other people or situations that involve other people. Now, uh, one concept is that we have things called memory structures. All right, kind of like units of understanding. Uh, you can even think of unit, units of understanding uh, stored in the brain. And there are various ways you can kind of conceptualize uh, these abstract hypothetical constructs that we're talking about. Um, one of them is a schema. Now, a schema, if you've ever learned about uh, Piaget and perhaps a developmental psychology class or child development class, you might have heard that term before. Sometimes they change it to say scheme, um, but a scheme or a schema is basically a unit of understanding, a unit of information. It's what you understand about something. Uh, let's say when you're young and you are learning about words, uh, you know, you're learning vocabulary as a toddler and you're building your vocabulary and people will label things for you. And so perhaps you see a four legged animal and you're, you're, you're interested, you're fascinated, you're pointing and you might even, if you're able to, you say, what that, what that? And adults around you or older children might say, oh, that's a kitty cat. That's a dog. And you're like, oh, I'm forming a new schema. I've got a new thing that I know. And your schema is like what you understand about that thing. At that instance, your schema for, if it's a dog, your schema would just include, hey, four-legged thing, looks something like that. You're not gonna know all the dog breeds of the world. You're not gonna know what makes it a dog or um, uh, what differentiates it from other things, other animals. You're gonna have a very limited schema at that point. You also have schemas for social situations and social con uh, concepts. Uh, so a schema automatically, instantly, without much effort, automatically directs and organizes incoming information. It labels, it categorizes. So in a social situation, this could be something like, okay, if I see someone walking up and they look very disheveled, and they look very disorganized in their movement and they walk up and they get ready to say something to you you might have a schema that says okay so people who normally look like this they uh, may have problems you know they may have problems they may be struggling uh they may not uh you know they they may be under the influence or something like that now this information may or may not be correct all right but that's you know stuff that's included in your schema or if someone walks up to you and they are wearing a police uniform and it looks like a legit thing not like from a costume company you know you really okay so this i'm my schema of this uniform is that's a police officer they play certain roles i'm going to expect a certain interaction from them <clears throat> These are just many ways uh, that you can kind of quickly categorize somebody. Uh, the idea with schemas and the other mental structures that we're going to talk about is they're meant to simplify a complex world. The world is complicated. The world is complex. And so we do have little kind of shortcut techniques that we use uh, to try to make things simpler. When we talked about dual processing, the reason we like to go with intuition more than logic is it's easier, it's quicker, it's simpler. And so the thing about a schema is it ignores some information and forces us to pay attention to other information. There's certain information that we see as more salient, more relevant, you know, like with the police officer, you focus on that police uniform. Uh, you might uh, not necessarily pay attention to other, other features about them. You might not notice things like their hair color or any kind of uh, ring or anything that they're wearing. You're like, okay, uh, uniform. Uniform means something. That's an important bit of information. Uh, I'm expecting a, a police officer interaction here. Um, and so schemas are categories that we use to understand the world. You can have gender schemas, like, hey, this is a man, this is a woman. I'm going to expect them to act a certain way because they are a man or a woman. You know, like what, uh, sometimes when I get really fired up about something and I'll get really angry and they're like, oh, you're really angry for a woman. I'm like women have emotions too. Or better yet, if I curse, if I get really, really frustrated about something and people are like, oh, shut your mouth. You know, I'll be like, well, wait, if I, if I was a man, would you have the same reaction? And sometimes the answer is actually maybe, maybe perhaps not. Um, also, sometimes we expect people to have certain jobs 
based on gender. You know, like uh, uh, a lot of times when a doctor walks in, if that, if that doctor is a woman, sometimes people will say, oh, the nurse is here. They're like, actually, I'm the doctor. Or the nurse walks in and it's a man and they're like, oh, doctor, you're here. They're like, actually, I'm your nurse. Uh, and, you know, we all it, rationally, using logic, we know that there are women who are doctors and there are plenty of men who are nurses. Some of you may be nursing majors taking my class. All right, but your intuition makes you go quickly. It makes you take shortcuts. When you use your schemas, you're just like, oh, my schema says that that's most likely to be one, one role versus the other. So schemas, just like any kind of quick shortcut, it can lead to mistakes, but it often does save time. I mean, that's why we do it. We try to simplify the world. There are two types, two types of schemas, scripts and stereotypes. So a script is a behavioral schema, an action schema. It's like how to act in a certain situation. So you might have a script for how to act with a police officer. Uh, let's say you get pulled over and, um, and the, you know, they come and they start talking to you. You probably are going to act differently than if someone just waves you down because maybe they're trying to ask directions or something or uh, they're trying to tell you, hey, you've got a flat tire. Uh, you know, you might be, for the person who doesn't look like a police officer or didn't pull up in a, a police car with flashing lights and stuff, you might uh, be sound, sort of casual and, and a little, little hesitant, like, hey, why are you talking to me? And then you might see that they, they seem to, oh, hey, how you doing? With a police officer, you're probably good. For many people, you're going to be very serious. Uh, what seems to be the problem, officer? You're probably going to, you know, follow directions and be rather uh, compliant and obedient. And so those are those are part of your script. Your script is how are you supposed to act in a particular situation? When you walk into a classroom versus when you walk into a friend's dorm room, you probably act differently. There are different expectations of you. When you walk into a fast food restaurant to get your dinner versus when you walk into a fancy sit-down restaurant to get your dinner, there are different things you expect. You know, one restaurant you expect to be seated. You expect to be shown to your table. You expect them to hand you a menu. Whereas at McDonald's, you just expect to walk up and order your food and go sit down and do everything for yourself. You have different expectations based on those scripts. Now, stereotypes. Stereotypes. I am going to have a whole other video about stereotypes and other videos relevant to stereotypes, but your basics, right? Stereotypes are generalizations, generalizations that we make about people, particularly like uh, groups of people and things like that. Um, stereotypes make members of a group seem more similar than they actually are. They are a generalization. You look at perceived patterns, whether or not you're perceiving them accurately or not, you look at perceived patterns and say people who are a member of this group tend to do this thing and over time it kind of takes on almost like a rule like people in this group do this thing or should do this thing or always do this thing and so they are helpful in making us feel like we understand the complicated world they do simplify our thinking but they can lead to mistakes uh, particularly when we apply them too widely so they assume that all group members have the same characteristics, like all women do this, all men want this, all professors do that one thing. Those are examples of stereotypes. Um, I'm going to talk more about stereotypes in a separate video.